Hey people, Mark here, and welcome to another unscripted video. Today I want to do something that I haven't done on this channel yet, and uh, talk about a specific piece of Halo media. At the end, I'll drop you a little trailer for the next video, another ship breakdown maybe. Who knows? You will you don't know. You'll have to wait and see. Halo Rubicon Protocol was a book that came out on August 9th last year, and came. Uh, it was written by Kelly Gay, author of the Orion Forge series, which is pretty good, one of my favorite storylines in Halo. Basically, the plot follows the story of two members of Fireteam Shadow, two members of Fireteam Taurus, one member of Fireteam Entrapment, and one member of Fireteam Windfall, after the Infinity is taken down by the Banished. Oh, subscribe please, by the way. The Spartans lead several Marines on Zeta Halo, and the whole story is just not a happy time. These are the Spartans that Chief gets his armor abilities off of in Infinite, and the ones present in the audio logs. And what I think works so well in this story is, aside from the fact that it's another iteration of Oh No, the Covenant is digging for something, the book really does a good job of highlighting the dread of being a human on Zeta Halo during this battle. Like, the Spartans are here, cool, but they can only do so much. But these Spartans, these are peak Spartan 4s. Like, they act Spartanly. They get the job done, they don't fuck around or take their helmets off in combat zones or dick twiddle, no. They do their very best to exemplify the strength and resilience humanity has to offer, but ultimately, they fail in almost all of their goals. And this is why it works so much for me. Halo has always gone hard on how much hope the Spartans inspire on the Marines in the battlefield. Even as a staunch proponent of dropping the Spartan obsession myself, the sheer dismantling of humanity's hope hasn't been done this well since Halo Primordium, maybe further back like Legends or Evolutions or something. The Spartans, as a narrative tool, are meant to represent the very best of humanity's ability to overcome hardship, at least that's how I've always interpreted their usage. They're strong, fast, smart, dutiful. They don't lose sight of the bigger picture. They fight for more than just themselves. These are things that almost unanimously we think are good qualities. At the same time, they themselves experience hardship and mental and emotional turmoil. They slip up and overestimate themselves and others. They underestimate enemies because even though Spartans are supposed to be the best of us, we all fail. We all make mistakes. In that sense, Halo is a very human story, but these flaws that the Spartans have, these imperfections, the Marines don't get to see those. They barely even see the Spartans as people. I was recruited. What? Spartan program. I was recruited. Yeah? That's not how they do it now with the 2.0s. The 2.0s, they just take. Take? Six years old. Take? Six years old. They snatch them, train them, tweak them. Years and years of it. Not even the Navy would... <laughs> oh, never mind. And by the time they're 14, they're barely human. Then they give them a last set of tweaks to finish the job. Oh my god. Lots of them die. The ones that don't, those are the 2.0s. How do you know this stuff? Hey, look! It's Cavetti's. Cavetti's? Oh my god! We used to come here for ice cream in the summer! Dad, come on, we've got to stop! <laughs> While some, like that Spartan one you just heard, James James, yes, that's his legal name, have a more negative view of the Spartan 2s as a result of knowing their origins, most hold them to an almost godlike status. I was in the back of an overturned warthog firing an M41. How did you manage to keep it together? We knew Master Chief was still in the fight. He gave us hope. The results of this are twofold. One, the presence of a Spartan on the field drastically improves morale and gives them hope. Two, when a Spartan is injured or killed, it makes an enemy seem even larger. That said, the six months between the fall of the Infinity and Master Chief's return are hellish. Just take a listen to the thoughts of Lucas Browning, a combat medic, as he sat in a banished prison cell. In the third or fourth week, he wasn't quite sure anymore, the Brutes brought out the Spartans. Five of them dragged limp into an open area, either severely injured or dead already. It was impossible to tell, as they were certainly unable to fight back. But Lucas prayed for their quick and merciful demise as the brutes, jackals, and grunts set about dismantling the precious Mjolnir armor, ripping it off in the crudest, most damaging ways possible. Manglers, plasma cutters, brute force. And if the Spartans hadn't already been dead, then it happened sometime during the dismantling. Afterward, their bodies were pummeled, used as target practice, disgraced, defiled, treated like trash. He was quite certain now that the Banished had specifically chosen a human to process the prisoners. Being betrayed by your own kind was far more destructive to the psyche. It was psychological warfare at its finest. It probably wasn't even random that Lucas's holding cell overlooked the execution area. The Banished weren't simply defeating their enemies in battle. Under Esherim's leadership, 
Sophisticated tactics were employed to crush them mentally as well. Total domination. And it worked. By the time Lucas and the others were being loaded onto a transport to the Banished's long-term prison, the tower, emptiness filled the places where hope and promise used to dwell. It was so complete that he no longer had the waking, terrible flashbacks of the Reviri Massacre. Everything was muted, grayed out, distant. So I will leave you with that. The book is good. Order it or pick it up if you can, but I will spoil no more. Later this year, I'm going to be doing full book reviews for Outcasts and Epitaph, which is another one by Kelly Gay. But yeah, that's all. Please subscribe. A full video should be out soon, and here's a little sneak peek at it for all you lovely people that stuck around who definitely did not skip to the end. If you skipped to the end, delete yourself. Anyway, you'll want to watch this to the end as well. For too many years, humanity was on the back foot, reacting to threats rather than preventing them. The rest of the galaxy was bigger than us, stronger than us. We were mice hiding in the shadows, hoping the giants would not see us. No more. Humanity is no longer on the defense. We are the giants now. I need a status report. We've got three heavy impacts in We've got four impacts directly into the holster. Captain Lasky, this is FMG 525. Do your read. They're dropping occupation units by the hundreds. This is Lasky to all hands. The Infinity has been compromised. First, the not came from the sun. With chaos that followed, we hardly had time to notice the other three bear down upon you. Do you know how long it took us to neutralize your greatest ship? Four minutes! In four minutes, the infinity, mankind's finest achievement, Trans rights.